Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. So on this week's episode, I'm going to be replacing the water pump in my Saab 93 Aero Wagon uh, with the B284 V6 turbo engine. It actually looks pretty easy. The water pump looks like it's just under the um, passenger side engine mount. Um, so it actually looks like there's pretty easy access to it. Uh, hopefully none of the bolts on the engine mount give me any trouble, but they shouldn't. This car has zero rust and all the other mounts I take out, took off were not too difficult. Um, so the symptoms the car's been having is just whenever the coolant temp or whenever the coolant is hot, uh, it's just dripping down this, I guess it's front side of the engine, uh, or passenger side of the engine. I can't really tell where it's coming from, but I'm pretty sure that's the only place with coolant on it on that side of the engine. So I'm hoping that it's either the gasket or the mechanical seal on the water pump. Uh, so I have a new gasket. Uh, new water pump, and yeah, and yeah, uh, it looks pretty easy. I think the diff most difficult part is going to be getting the intake box off or putting it back on because every time I do it, it's just a kind of crazy jigsaw puzzle to get everything lined up. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. As they say on Mighty Car Mods, the first step is to jack up your car. The step isn't really necessary, it just creates less bending over for the rest of the job. This was actually one of the easier times I had removing the airbox on the car. Before removing the motor mount, it is important to support the bottom of the engine on the oil pan. Everything is smooth sailing on this job until you try to remove the front bolt from the engine bracket. I don't really have any good tips other than try everything in your toolbox until you can get it off. The AC compressor lines don't move much and it's very difficult to access the bolt. There's also a power steering hose that's held onto the bracket so make sure you remove that. Before you relieve the belt tension, loosen the nuts on the water pump pulley, although they're not very hard on there. Then use a breaker bar to take the tension off the tensioner and remove the belt.
There are six bolts that hold the water pump on. I slowly loosen them and drain the coolant. I drain from the water pump just because I recently flushed the coolant, but it probably would be less of a mess and easier to drain all your coolant from the radiator. Once the water pump is removed, I use the plastic razor blade and Brillo pad to remove all the old gasket material. The AC Delco water pump kit comes with a paper gasket, but I elected to order this one from Aesop Parts that was metal and rubber, which hopefully will be longer lasting and better sealing. Tighten the new water pump in a cross pattern to 15 foot pounds. Obviously there wasn't enough room for a torque wrench, so I just snugged them down with my small quarter inch drive ratchet. I filled the engine with new coolant prior to putting the pulley and brackets back on just to see if I could see any leakage. So that's a wrap on uh, this episode. Uh, overall it was pretty easy, there was just that one bolt, there's always that one bolt, but on this job it was the one that was on the uh, front side of the bracket that goes on the engine and it was just a pain in the ass to try and figure out the right combination of ratchet extension and socket and universal joint and length to be able to get it around those AC compressor lines. You can not jack the engine up and down trying to get it um, positioned so you can get it off, but it probably took me like an hour and 45 minutes to get that bolt off. And then like everything else was probably the same amount of time to do literally everything like taking it apart and then putting it back together uh, so but on the way back it was a lot easier once you know what to use uh, and then also there's that one bolt for the power steering line which i didn't see the first time i, I went to take that bracket off that one's a little difficult too um, if you have like a ratcheting wrench with a flexible head it makes it a lot easier um, but overall pretty easy job and uh, hopefully fingers crossed the car will actually drive for more than a couple days before it breaks again. Um, I, I let it idle in the garage and I don't see any, it leaking at all. There was actually one coolant pipe that I had to loosen um, to get the motor mount off that was leaking a little bit, but I readjusted it and it seems like it's good now. So hopefully, if not, I'll have to get a new overing for that, which is pretty easy. Uh, but anyways, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's gonna give me a little bit more than a couple days of use before the next issue arises. I'll make sure that I get it really hot and bleed the coolant system good and then uh, just make sure it's not leaking when it's hot because it seemed like that's when it was actually doing it before, not necessarily when it was just sitting. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys uh, like this uh, episode. As always, if you really liked it, like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more content. And uh, if, you, if you want to predict how long it's going to go before <laughs> the next item needs addressing on it, then go ahead and leave a comment down below. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.